another episode of Morelia Python Radio. And in this episode, we are talking with David Brahms. Now, you may know David from his amazing green tree pythons, but he is also the owner of Specialty Design Enclosures. And Specialty Design Enclosures focuses on solving some of the keeping issues that keepers have run into over the years. David has designed everything from perches to ready-to-use enclosures for a baby to juvenile arboreal snake. Unfortunately, David had an emergency during the show and had to cut the conversation short, but we will have David back up and we will finish our talk. So let's get into the show and let's get it going. All right, David. No. All right, everybody, welcome to <laughs> another episode of Mary Python Radio. We are episode 492, as Owen just gives me a hard time about doing this intro that we've we done have for the to past make sure 11 it's years. Done. It has to be done <laughs> properly. Not had it we've down. only been practicing for like 12 years. Yeah. Should, should come, you should be able to do this in your sleep. Yes, you know? I should, but yeah. I can't. Yeah. But uh, we, I'm excited to, uh, to have, uh, David Brahms on tonight. He's joining us. It's been quite a while. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. Do you remember when the last, I want to say it was like 20, all these episodes blur together. It's yeah. just this. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It's a large fever dream at this point. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't know when it'll end. So, yeah. so yeah, so we were doing, um, we were, we were, Giving uh, Condros a little bit of love, and you know, as we are contractually carpet. obligated to do every hundred something <laughs> episodes, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, then yeah, we will, then we will forget about them for another hundred episodes. <laughs> no, nah, come on, Owen, come on, come on, come bury on. But, them uh, in the back, yeah. David not only has some amazing chondros, um, but uh, he also is uh, the owner and uh, the genius behind Specialty Enclosures Designs, which uh, there's so many things that you have now. It's, it's just, you can it's, get it's crazy lost on that website until, yeah. I mean, I have, I have three racks of 15 quart tubs. And the only reason I have racks of 15 quart tubs is because of David's inserts that you can put in there for perching. Cause otherwise, awesome. why am I, it's way too tall for carpet pythons and other things. What the hell is the point of having it? But adding his, and I've said this tons, it just makes it so that now there's another level for the snake to use, therefore making it. And it's a great go, grow up bin for carpets. Um, Small colubrids. I have a lot of stuff in those kinds of bins, and they all have those inserts. It's great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think one of my favorite things about those things is just you see some different behavior in the animals mm-hmm. when you start introducing things like that to their cage. It, it just adds a whole new element to their lives, and it's kind of fun to watch that, watch them use it. Yep, and it's uh, it, it has made feed time a little interesting when yeah. they're on the bottom and I'm dangling it at the top and they're just like, dude. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you aren't a smart one, so, <laughs> so we didn't breed you for your intelligence. We bred you to look pretty. So, That's right. yeah, but it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I was checking out the site, and um, you know, I guess I, I don't know if this is the newest thing, but I I don't remember seeing it before. Was the uh, I guess it's like the uh, tranquility base, uh, the young and arbore- uh, arboreal enclosure. Yeah, that's um, brand new. Yeah, is brand new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I've had it on the site for about a week now. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That's <laughs> so. Cool. What was the what was what was the what were you thinking with with putting that out there? Just like being able to add levels of. No, um, no, it's actually, it, it's not, if you really look at it, it's not something that's incredibly new. It's basically a single cubby from a rack. Mm-hmm. And what the whole purpose behind it was that um, it seems as though there's a huge influx of new condo keepers mm-hmm. uh, getting into green tree pythons. And when you go into some of the, the more popular groups for them on a daily basis, you have people asking for critiques on their enclosure that they just put together to keep baby chondros and you'll inevitably have 20 people saying oh you need to start over you got this all wrong and uh, the, the whole everything you've this, done garbage yeah. oh okay <laughs> i don't know what you've done but it's horrible it's horrible yeah. thank, thank you okay <laughs> so the whole point of this was to provide brand new keepers mm-hmm. with a, 
the ability to house uh, a very young green tree python, which is probably their most delicate stage mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in a way that replicates uh, how most breeders have raised them since they hatched. And what that gotcha. should do is uh, minimize the amount of stress that mm -hmm. the babies will experience when they end up in the, the new keeper's hands. So they will be kept in an enclosure that's very similar to how the breeder was keeping them. It's enclosed on five sides. So you only have the one side with visibility. Um, you know, and you guys know tubs and racks, they're phenomenal for mm -hmm. maintaining heat, humidity, all the really important stuff, which uh, for chondros, as you guys know, um, they're, they're hardy, but they have a very narrow bandwidth yeah. uh, for margin of error. So mm -hmm. as long as you keep them within that, that margin, you're fine. And this is just meant to make things very simple for the new keeper who hasn't really uh, cut their teeth yet on chondros and become super familiar with them and being able to read them properly and, and that kind of stuff. So the point was just to make it simple. Um, so if someone's jumping in, they don't have to, you know, race around and put something together they think is appropriate and they mm -hmm. are usually way off. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's the whole point behind it. That that's pretty awesome because, you know, I think like, you know, if you have like some people use extra terrors and stuff like that, if they yeah. have, a, have a baby snake, but like, then you have the whole humidity thing that you have to sort of, you know, yep. because mm -hmm. it's open top and you could be losing humidity. Yeah. Whereas with this, uh, yeah, especially for, you know, con like carpets could probably, you know, be able to withstand that humidity difference, but it seems that contrast are a little more sensitive to that. Yeah. I, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's everything. Like when you put them in an EXO, right. You're, mm -hmm. you're now fighting against the current because yeah. you're, you're trying to maintain humidity. Mm -hmm. and how do you do that? Well, you seal up the top. So now you've ruined your ventilation and how are you going to heat the enclosure? Well, oftentimes new keepers will put uh, a heat lamp or mm -hmm. something on there, which is way overkill. So you've got all these opposing elements that are fighting each other to try and create uh, the optimal environment for baby green tree pythons, which doesn't seem to work very often. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if, if you've been keeping them for years and you're like very familiar with how green trees are and you know what the subtleties are in terms of their behavior and the signs to look for, and you want to keep them in a big glass, you know, XO or whatever, by all means, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll probably be, be successful because you know everything that uh, the animals are needing and how to get there. But for somebody who's just jumping in, um, yeah. it can be daunting. And, yeah. You know, these yeah. animals have a bad reputation for, you know, just dropping dead. And, and I think a lot of times it just has to do with um, they didn't get them from a reputable breeder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an imported, most likely wild caught um that could come with you know a lot of problems that you won't see immediately and then you couple that with keeping them in an enclosure that uh you're constantly battling all those parameters to make it good so you're you're there all the time checking it and the animal's getting stressed out and it's just a recipe for failure yeah uh, you know yeah. and the, we're just trying to steer new people in a direction that'll make them more successful that's really the, the whole point yeah and, and you know it's also another thing is that moving from like you said about it being closed on all sides but one moving from a tub to like people immediately shove this thing into uh almost i want to say minimalistic but a not very thought through tank exoterra glass yeah. on all sides it's in a well moving air like they set up in their living room like that's a lot of like sensory stuff like that's it's a lot to hit a baby chondra over the head yep. with you know and that's something else too where this can kind of be tucked away until it starts getting a little bit more confident it's basically like it seems like this you're trying to lessen what it this animal has to be exposed to all at once so yeah. ye, baby steps, <laughs> so, yeah. which is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah, I I love the um, I I love your stuff because you know as somebody that you know, in, in I I've sort of slimmed down my collection now, but in in the past when I was like breeding, you know, heavy and had all these animals, it it made for the ability to sort of, you know 
keep the animal in a way that they're able to, you know, have the behaviors that they're supposed to have. But at the same time, you know, make it super easy to clean and, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, uh, just, just the things that you have are just, just awesome. So, um, yeah. And, and if, cool stuff. if I haven't broken every single perch that, you know, I've ever purchased <laughs> from you, they're durable as hell. Like, I mean, it was, that was my main thing is like, I'm going to break these things. So, cause it, I, I read your, I remember putting them all together. There's the instructions. Do not push hard. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, did he write this special for me? <laughs> like it was yeah. like, dear Owen. No. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, um, but I, I do like it because even with nervous animals, the whole perching just comes right out and you put it down and it can sit over there. You can clean the tub and it goes right back in and it's yep. an easy way to deal with um, uh, a lot of little, just angry little animals, <laughs> like a, yeah. little olive yeah. pythons that are pissed off as hell are totally cool. If they just sit on their perch the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I pretty much almost exclusively keep green trees. So, mm-hmm. you know, as I'm selling all of these perches to all these different people, it's, it's really cool and fascinating to see what everybody else is keeping and what they're using them with. Um, you know, everything from Mangshang vipers to, I mean, you name it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I should take awesome pictures. To see that. I should take pictures because behind me right now, I have my rough scale pythons. Yeah. And in two out of the three enclosures, they have the ceiling hides and they're both in them, like that's staring awesome. out. And then the one on top is too big. <laughs> so oh, <that's> cool. <laughs> that one couldn't fit in one. So I'm curious, did you have, have has anybody used those for chondros? The um, ceiling hides? Do you know? Yeah. I don't think so. And I've tempted, I've been tempted to do it just to see. I would bet they would use it. Oh, yeah. 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 You know? Carpets love it. Carpets rough scales love it. Love it. Um, I think most snakes love it. Every, you know what I mean? I I, yeah. I put one of my rhinos in an open cage that I had that had a ceiling hide just because I needed to get it away from the female, and it went right up in there to the point where I installed them in their big enclosure now, and they absolutely love it. So yeah. I would say even any slim body tree dwelling snake is going to love a hide that is up high and away from everything else. Yeah. Makes them feel secure. Yeah. 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 hundred yeah. percent. Um, so how do you, I, I'm, I was, I've always been curious, like how do you come up with your ideas? Is it somebody pitches you an idea? Is it like you're working on something and you're like, Oh man, you I wake up in I the middle it. of the night, scream Eureka, run downstairs <laughs> and start drawing. Yeah, you have a notepad oh my by God. the side of your bed. That you... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of all that. Okay. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, for the most part, a lot of this comes out of, you know, um, what is what do they say? Necessity is the mother mm. of invention, right? So right. my own husbandry and things like that, I'll be like, boy, I could really use something that does this or whatever, and then I'll, you know, try and come up with something that that gets that job done. Uh, but I do have, you know, uh, customers who will reach out to me and say, hey, I've been thinking about this. Want to see if you can make it? And and uh, oftentimes I I can do it. Um, just depends on what the limitations of the machines are and and that sort of thing. But Gotcha. Um, you know, I definitely get, you know, a fair amount of people that do kind of reach out and, and ask me if I can, you know, modify this or make a, a unique perch for this tub or, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. What was what was the micro hook? Where did that one come from? Because I'm sitting there and I'm like, why would you have my like, looks, like looks like a dentist tool? <laughs> like, <it is>. right? <laughs> yeah. That comes from small our, our buddy Justin Smith over at the uh the condo cast. Ah, you know, okay. So he was thinking that he could uh he could use a little tiny hook like that and and uh threw it past me one day and it was a great idea. We actually yeah. moved quite a few of those. So nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet it would be cool with like uh Antaresia and yeah. Know, <laughs> any any very wee snake. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Um, what about I, I was curious to to uh, hear about the uh custom PVC pipe perches that you had. They they look pretty interesting. Look, for, thanks. Uh, yeah, they look really cool. Website. Yeah. Yeah, I um my buddy uh Gary Shavino, do you guys know? We've heard oh, of yeah. this guy, Mr. Yes. Gary Shavino. Yeah. He's, he's coming on Thursday. He's coming on Thursday. <laughs> oh, <is he> really? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, Gary's a good dude. Um yeah, he's got um you know that new YouTube channel uh mm-hmm. where he's been sure. you know putting out videos and uh, very educational. Everybody's interested, GS Reptiles on YouTube. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh he goes in great detail on um 
you know, a lot of arboreal stuff like chondros, how to house them and things like that. It's always good to see it in video. So shameless plug for Gary. He's always <laughs> been really nice to me. So I figured I'd, I'd mention him on here as well. Shameless yeah. plugs are allowed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, he reached out to me one day cause he was getting a whole new, um, uh, series of cages for, um, this renovation that he was doing, uh, uh-huh. his home. And he needed new uh, PVC perches uh, for all those cages. And that's something that I hadn't really dabbled in uh, up until that point. And the, the reason why mine looked the way that they do is because I really wasn't thrilled about the idea of scorching the pipes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never that's liked that idea. Do it. Yeah. yeah. And it was really, you know, they seem to work fine. The animals don't seem to, you know, experience any health defects or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, it was really more of, do I really want to be in my garage scorching PVC and, and dealing with that? The animals uh, not going to be fine. How are those fumes going to affect me? <laughs> like, right. <it> is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I did some research and I, I came up with a, uh, a way to stain the PVC, um, instead of scorching it. So it's a, it's a permanent stain that bonds to the actual PVC and, and you can't, remove it unless you like physically gouge it, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But what it allowed me to do was, you know, uh, start using some different colors and things like that, try and Mm -hmm. make things look um, different. I mean, I think they look fairly natural. Um, So, you know, just came up with a a way of staining them. And and then uh, instead of scorching them to get them pliable, I, I heat them up. Um, with uh, some special heat tape that I use uh, to wrap around the pipe to, to mm-hmm. keep them up to a point where you know the plastic reaches that glass transition temperature, and then I can introduce some twists and bends and things like that. That's right. So cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's where that all came from. Nice. You saw the picture I sent. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm looking okay. at it. I'm like, <laughs> do I have room for? Do you I know, do I need what? What animals <laughs> do purchase? Like it? Yeah. All of them. You know, all of them do. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking that would be a great way to get. So, like, I'm thinking of doing like this naturalistic uh, bread lie enclosure type of thing. And you know, those white trees that is oh, yeah. from Australia. Ah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, man, that would be well. And also, I like it because if it's a PVC, you don't have to worry about what other insects might be living in the tree branch you just brought inside. And <laughs> um, it's easier, it, cleanable. Like, yeah, I, you can I just disinfect them, right? Yeah. Which yeah. is fantastic. You yep. can't disinfect a tree branch. I tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's that's awesome. Very cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else that I'm missing? That I, I think those were the things that I saw. Those are the new ones. Yeah. Anything the, else you got the in the things. you're cooking? No, it's most of the standard stuff. It, you know, I I work a regular full time job too, mm. and I mm. do the three D printing thing as kind of a side hustle, and and uh, I definitely reached the point where I'm maxed out in terms of. Mm my bandwidth um, so I, kind of like me with podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah so i purposely i i can't add much new right now because i just i don't have the bandwidth you know and, gotcha. and you're on top of that you're also like you have a side side hustle where it's like oh i breed these things as well oh yeah right yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I know you were big time into the Manaquaris. Has that uh, have you have you continued on with that project? And yeah, that's the, the 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 locality slash phenotype that that's my favorite. Okay, and I, I put a focus on that when you could get red baby Manaquaris um, relatively easily. They never been super uh, available, but at the time I was able to to get a group together and and. Um, yeah, that's definitely the the locality that, for whatever reason, um, you know, I, I really enjoy. Um, they're they're strikingly beautiful, and um, I, I like the idea of um, you know working with animals, fresh animals, to try and do some refinement on your own yeah. instead of um, you know the the bloodlines, as you guys know, go back decades and decades in the condor community, and and they're absolutely beautiful animals, but. I, I like the idea of getting your own stuff and trying to, you know, refine things on your own too. And that's kind yeah. of where I'm at with my, my collection. Cool. Okay. So is it yeah. just Manaquaris or is it like mostly Manaquaris and then like some yeah. other stuff? It's mostly Manaquari, but I, I've got a smattering of some of the other uh, mm-hmm. localities. I've got some Aru, some Wamina, Biak, um, you know, most of the, the standard stuff. Cool. Yeah. 
do you find yourself, you know, crossing them and, um, or are you, are you, you never keeping them separate the as localities or like yeah. what's your, I'm, I'm agnostic on all that. I, <laughs> yeah. I've got animals that I absolutely will only pair them with a, a, the same locality just because I want to refine how they look. But right. then I'm not against mixing, you know, uh, localities either. I think you can get some phenomenal results. Yeah. And, right. Um, you know, I've got some stuff coming up this year where I'll be crossing some Biak uh, into some Aru and, and maybe even some Manaquari as well. And, and but also doing some straight Manaquari pairings, too. Awesome. Do you find the demand is more for localities as to designers or is it equal or where, where does it where do you see that? Well, um, I think it's high for both. Yeah. Um, you know, the the designer bloodlines obviously have a long track record and people are always striving for whatever that bloodline is, whether it's high blue or high yellow or whatever. That's why they're buying into that bloodline. And, and you know, for a while, um, it seemed as though the number of captive produced green tree pythons just it's not super high you know, mm -hmm. People struggle with getting uh, through the entire process, and then having a nice, healthy, viable clutch to, to sell afterwards. And so you've got that, you know, that cliche uh, supply demand thing going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and um, the same goes with the locality animals. I would even say that the locality availability is even less than the designer stuff, mm -hmm. just because I think that's where most of the focus has been. Yeah. Uh, and you've got people now who are starting to, you know, put more focus on on different localities other than Aru and Biak. Um, the problem is, though, you know, COVID hit and everything else and yeah. imports aren't what they used to be. And, and it seems as though the variety just isn't there anymore. So um, demand is very, very high on, on yeah. all that if you can produce it. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like it was one of those things where maybe we didn't appreciate all the different ones when we had it, when they were coming yeah. in. It's yeah. like, I, I have not seen, a, uh, usually around this time, you see one or two juvenile green tree pythons on like the dealer tables or the flipper tables. And the same other thing, I have not seen a single one yeah. on anybody's table who did not produce it. Um, I went to a show, on Saturday up in Hamburg, and I don't believe I saw a single green tree python in the entire building, which, yeah. which is rare. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. That says a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. they're super popular too, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, it's probably a mix of both high demand mm -hmm. and, you know, not, not a lot of not importation. Yeah. <laughs> high demand, low know. supply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess it's good for the seller, bit for the buyer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's um, incredible how much prices have climbed. It's mm -hmm. shocking, really. Yeah, yeah. We were, you know, we were talking about that, and it's, it's, it's especially like even just on like a, a normal, uh, well, not normal. Let's say entry level type mm -hmm. chondro. You're talking at least what six to eight now, at least. I mean, just for your. Nothing special. A no basic Belgium neo whistles, import. Special bloodline. Yeah. I think if you're looking at special bloodlines, we're talking, you There's know, commas. a thousand plus. <laughs> oh yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, the six to eight hundred dollar price is going to be most likely an imported uh, baby. Um, oh, yeah. whether okay. they're actually captive hatched or not, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, but that's typically the price range of those. Most captive born stuff in the U.S. is a grand plus. It seems mm. like. okay. Um, you know, Biak and some of the more common stuff, maybe on the, you know, closer to a thousand, but you know, you, you get into some of the other more obscure localities, you're multiple thousands. To yeah. Get them. yeah. So do you have a, a feeling on that? Is that uh, a good thing or a bad thing? Um, you know, I know there's a lot of debate on, you know, that type, that topic in particular. Well, I think it depends on what side of the table you're sitting on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I never when we were talking to Mark, one of the things that I I never really thought about. I mean, I've thought about it, but not. I guess it was the way he phrased it. It was sort of along the lines of, you know, the amount of work that goes into establishing a baby chondro. You know, it's no joke. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so I kind of think it's. I kind of think it's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I you do know. Too. I, 
as a breeder, I, the amount of effort that you have to put in to get those babies to the point where you feel comfortable selling mm -hmm. them, um, yeah. I think it warrants the prices that they're going for right now. Yeah. Um, and also the flip side of that is, you know, I, I love to see new people coming in, but, um, you know, I, I hold these animals in really high regard and, mm -hmm. and I hate to see people jumping in and, and buying that $600 condo because that's all they could afford. Um, and then not being able to properly take care of it. And mm. they just, you know, the heart really isn't in it and, and that kind of stuff. Whereas if you start getting into the, the higher dollar, uh, price range, I think you filter some of that out as yeah. at least yeah. as that might sound. Uh, yeah, I no, no. I mean, it. it's in it, the animal's best interest. But you know? Very few people are going to be able to afford a $700 impulse buy at a reptile show. Yeah. Like it's like I came here with $700, you know, and I'm not leaving yeah. without a reptile. Like, no, no, just go buy 700 geckos. Like that's no, right. it's when you get that high, now you have getting into people who are going to research it, who are going to, have to save up to get it and are going to prepare before they go and yep. make the purchase. So, yeah. 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 I think with like, you know, I, I, I guess I would compare it to the bones thing. And I think with that, to me, the, the, the problem I have with that whole, you know, $10,000 mm. is, you know, for, for a single animal is I feel that that price range is so out of line with a lot of people that if they had those animals in hand, Maybe could they could, could figure out how to produce them, and mm -hmm. then maybe the captive born and bred, ten grand. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. I, maybe I don't know if that falls into the same thing as the chondro, where it's keeping. To your point, right? I mean, that's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting a snake like that, and um, and and they require a, a, a special care. So, I, I you know, I don't I know. I go back to how time. driven you are. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. The animal's expensive, but is that like? your real passion and are you like is this your thing yeah and you know if it is you're gonna go after it Man, you know? yeah. and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing nobody you know? nobody ever got into like pythons because it was cheap easy <laughs> like you know right. it's not no <laughs> no one ever said that at all like i right. this none of this should be if you're gonna do it correctly and you're gonna do it on the up and up none of this is gonna be cheap like right. you know it can be less expensive certain ways but you're, you're still animals are not cheap <laughs> so yeah i guess that's a good point that you just said david i never thought about it that way as as far as like the whole um idea that if you're really passionate about it you're gonna do it mm -hmm. right because yep. immediately what went through my head when you said that is like i've paid some big dollars for carpet pythons yeah but I did it because I wanted that animal. Right. So I figured out a way to make it happen. Yep. Yep. You know. Um, so yeah, yeah. I I can't I'm I'm with you there. Yeah. I I didn't think about it that way before. So yeah. um is it still uh I mean, is there are are there people in the community that think that that's a bad thing? Or is it just people that can't get their hands on those type of people animals? complaining because they don't want to spend that much money? Right, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's really probably what it is. Yeah. But it, it's crazy though. Like, am I am I totally think and like out? Maybe I'm so out of touch with it. But like, if you're gonna buy like an expensive dog or a parrot, oh come I mean, on, you're gonna dude. be talking about like, you know what I mean? So no, like, no, no, why no. is it okay that you would do what? like expensive parrot? Like, dude, that. That's like five grand because right, it's got a black feather on its head. Okay, like, oh, right, shut up. Okay. Like, yeah, no, that's, the, yeah, the 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 fact that certain things, certain pythons, the snake stuff should catch up with certain other pet hobbies, like birds, uh, certain species and colors of birds are expensive. Fish, mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing that, like, people will not mind having an expensive fish because then they're going to go all out with the big expensive fish tank we yep. seem to be the only ones who are like i have a fourteen thousand dollar animal and i keep it hidden in a bin underneath my bed like it yeah. is yeah it's a little weird it is yeah. it is yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's changing though i think we're, we are kind of I would going say through so. renaissance a little bit with, mm -hmm. with reptile keeping um you've got so many people getting involved now that you know, you know, when I was growing, I'm 50 and I've been doing this since I was a little kid. And right I'll tell you what, you. there was nobody around me that was into these things. I was the odd one out. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and now it's like there's thousands upon thousands of people that are getting into reptiles. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, the whole just keeping it in a drawer under your bed and that kind of stuff, I think that's kind of going to the wayside. I think people really are starting to look at these differently and, yeah. and giving them more attention than they've ever had, which I think yeah. is really cool, you know? Yeah, it seems that uh, the snake section of the hobby has been the slowest to sort of move the the, the husbandry or the you yep. know or or pushing it that as as a single pet type of yep. uh, situation mm-hmm. has been the the slowest to react. But I I think we're in a weird spot, right? And I, I was talking about this the other day on Lose Brain Radio was mm-hmm. that you have older keepers, right? I'm 48, so I'm of that same time frame of like, you know, when, I mean, when I was a kid, if you had a reptile, you were a weirdo. Yep. And sh- even when I started NPR, they're like, you do a, you do a what? You do a podcast you do a radio, a reptile? You do yeah. a radio show on snakes, yeah. you know? And now they're like, oh, I listen to your podcast. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. even like snakes. Yeah. What do you mean? You know? Yeah. So, um, but uh, you have the older keepers that have been doing it the way they've been doing it forever. And you have the newer keepers that are coming in with the new ideas. And we're sort of like in the middle of like this transition between the two. And Mm -hmm. it it is, it's creating some, some, some tension between the two groups. But I think ultimately, I think in maybe in 10 years, if we, if we're still allowed to keep these things, um, (laughs) if we haven't ruined it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That uh, <laughs> I I think I think I think we'll be looking at I think we'll be a lot like the fish hobby to where you're you're going and buying an animal and you're going to have this elaborate setup mm-hmm. and you're not yeah. going to have all these different snakes and stuff you're just going to have the the ones that you really really want you know so if you want a green I mean and I remember saying this a long time ago that like green trees seem to be the one that are like the perfect display animal yeah mm-hmm. you know i mean carpets yeah too but you know then you got the size thing of right. the whole thing but like the chondros like the smaller size beautiful colors put it in a in a in a decked out you know yeah. uh, enclosure mm-hmm. it's going to be right out there for you to watch it mm-hmm. and see what it's doing and uh, you know it's cool that's yeah I think um, the the snake side of the hobby has been slow to to you know go through this renaissance compared to some of the others because mm-hmm. I, I think in general um, there are a lot of people who are very dogmatic in their views and yes. snakes just because of how a good portion of them are relatively bulletproof and you feed them whole prey mm-hmm. and they can survive breed and and pretty much do everything. And there, there hasn't been this massive urge to um, figure them out because mm-hmm. in general, you know, you can, you can keep them, raise them, breed them, all that for the most part. Yeah. Uh, but let's say, you know, chameleons as an example um, need a very specific set of parameters to, to keep them alive and to breed mm-hmm. them and do all that. And, and there's been a huge push by those keepers to advance so that they yeah. can actually keep their animals alive and reproduce them. And we've been kind of, you know, we've had the luxury of working with animals that are relatively easy to work with. And there hasn't been this massive push to kind of reinvent the wheel with them, I think, because of that. Right. And um, I think now, because you've got all these fresh minds and people getting into it, that they want more out of mm-hmm. the hobby than what the, the past has been given. And like, yeah, well, maybe we should experiment with supplementing their their prey with a powdered vitamin or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we should give them UVB and, and you know, uh, then there's that whole clash between like uh, bioactive versus sterile tub setup and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think what people need to do is, is stop being so like rigid in their individual camps. Mm-hmm. Like condors are a great example, right? You get... Um, people constantly showing their new enclosure that they put together. It's bioactive. It's got a waterfall. It's got, you know, X, Y, Z. And you'll immediately have people jumping all over them saying, oh, you can't do that. Your animal's going to die, you know, which may be true. Um, But what really people should be doing is going, okay, I get it. You want to have a really beautiful enclosure to house this amazingly beautiful animal. Mm -hmm. It's, It's a tub. 
And I think what people need to do is, is uh, start thinking outside the box a little bit and say, okay, maybe not bioactive, but you know, nobody's like clearly defined what any of these terms really are anyway. Right. And it's like, why don't you think in terms of, I want it to look natural, not necessarily bioactive. Mm -hmm. And yes. you can do that and maintain a relatively sterile enclosure, but have it look like something that's bioactive. Right, right. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that I think, you know, the new keepers and, and, and people that are involved in the hobby now are starting to, to put some attention to, which I think is really cool. I think we're going to see some interesting stuff coming mm -hmm. up. The, you know, in the near and that and, and and just from from a standpoint of of what you've done, right? I mean, you've taken this little niche of the hobby that was looking for you know, tools to make the job easier. And you sort of, you know, uh, capitalized on that and said, mm -hmm. Hey, I, I can make this. And, you know, yeah. it, it's crazy. And mm -hmm. I think of, you know, people are thinking about breeding snakes and, and, and having that be something that, you know, uh, puts food on the table or whatever. But now you're starting to have these opportunities to where people, if they're thinking outside the box, like you're saying, could possibly start the next new thing that could, you know, that that could possibly be a business that you could have, even if it was a side business, so that you could buy more reptiles or better reptiles or better enclosures or whatever it would be. You know, um, I don't know. It's a uh, it's a good time. Yeah. <clears throat> there, there's a bunch of different opportunities too, because like you're saying, like having a naturalistic looking setup, but having mostly sterile environment. I mean, zoos have been doing this kind of stuff for ages, but we just we've always felt that we could not get to their level, but it's like, right. that's something that we can totally do with like making an enclosure or fake rocks and you know, your different things of, of uh, different types of tools to get the water and the food and the perching where it should be for the animal to feel more comfortable. Like we can all do that. It's just, you have to take it a step further, which yeah some people just seem to be hesitant about, but it does yeah. seem like that's true. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, David had to, uh, to step away. He had an emergency that he had to take care of, but, uh, no worries. Me and Owen will continue on. I think we've uh, done podcasts and... together long enough that we can finish up a show. Oh God, yeah. I don't know well, what to talk about. So, <laughs> so, so what I was going to say, Owen yeah. was, and I guess now we can have this we conversation, can. but, mm -hmm. um, you said about the zoos, right? And yeah. how we didn't think that we could get to the level. Do you think that the reptile hobby sort of has a look upon the zoo part of it in as far as like, it, it, meaning that like a lot of times the uh, cap the captivity mm. has often had better results. I would say than that zoos. So we sort of look at it as like, well, why am I going to listen to you? Right. I would say, and which, yeah, I wish that wasn't like it. And also, you know, Ooh. I know that a fact that there's a lot of zoo guys who are like, here I am trying to save this species that you're actively importing and letting it die in a bin under your bed. <laughs> right. Like right. there's, there's a lot of anger <laughs> yes. towards each other. So right. I get that, which uh, is very unfortunate because there's a lot of herpers that do bridge the gap. They have zoological jobs. They do work in, the zoological setting, maybe not even necessarily with reptiles. I think we know a guy that works with cats. Who is that guy? Hmm. 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 Oh, the name escapes me. Anyway, yeah. um, but <laughs> uh, the so, but that doesn't mean that you know your keeping is lacking or this other thing. And it's and it's good to look at it from a different box because there's a reason that the chondro lines have zoological, you know, blood in them is because all those zoo guys were the ones who actively got them to breed. So um, I would say that when you first start in your like herp journey, you almost feel like you're not on the same level as a zoological facility because you can't get to that level. It's a zoo. I'm not a zoo. I'm just a dude in my basement. And yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I, yeah. As I you that. expand and as you grow and you start realizing that there are a lot of species I think what did it for me is I went to the Columbus Zoo when I was uh, fresh out of college. And mm -hmm. this is when I was still like in the midst of like I had like maybe I think maybe I had like two breedings under my belt. Mm -hmm. And I go to the Columbus Zoo and I'm walking through the reptile house and I'm like Barnex, Maclots Pythons, Timors. And I'm like going through and I'm like, I, I, I've seen all of these for sale at a reptile show. <laughs> like right. it was one of those things Like I could get all of these. 
And from that setting, it just became the, well, I can't get giant enclosures like a zoo because that's impossible. But now if you see a lot of these caging companies, man, if I could redo my room now, like with these caging companies, some people are selling like the cages are like knee high, like two, three, like they're like six foot long knee high. And they're like set up that you could do, you could go nuts with these things, making a tiny little enclosure. It's great. (laughs) So that I think is where the corner is starting to turn is that, what we probably at one point thought was impossible and how we became so ingrained in our ways of rack systems and, you know, sterile like settings and this, uh, the other thing is becoming that you can quite easily make a faux display cage, you know, you and um, I mean, you have that zoo poxy stuff that you were kind of working yeah. with a little bit. I know, yep. Uh, people have talked to us about building fake rocks, <laughs> fake trees, this, that, and the other thing. We we just talked to Dave about making fake tree limbs. It's yeah. something that you can do. I have these faux rocks um, in the rough scale cage that look like just cliff faces. I have a giant mm-hmm. one in my garage. It's like as tall as you, dude. I want to put oh, it wow. in a cage so badly, but I don't know where to – I don't have a cage. No. <laughs> like, and it hurts no. me that it's in the garage. <laughs> wow. So, um, was it made for reptiles or? Was yeah, it well, it was, it was, um, there used to be a cage company called Cages by Design. I think they're still a cage company, but they had a big cage. Oh, they were bought, they bought Vision. Okay. So they're like right. one big company now. All right. Yeah. So they got the Cages by Design thing and their big claim to fame were these metal aluminum frame. I remember the push yes. board, like giant closet worth of shit. Yes. I and gotcha. you could pay <laughs> to have these rock ledges in there. They're for some reptiles like i think they used to say like iguanas and crap like that yeah so yeah. uh andrew had them for his monitors and the problem is with these things is that the back is made from like compressed sawdust so if it gets wet at all it's done. just a sponge and the whole thing's done and also they can get off kilter and you can't slide hmm. the doors open and you put that in a reptile enclosure right so <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, you compressed enough. sawdust is the only thing keeping this animal from outside <laughs> like it is <laughs> Hmm. Um, so <laughs> he, of course, it disintegrated, and he's like, "Do you want these things?" I'm like, "I do." So I took them uh, and I got them into. Like, what I did is I actually put a bunch of um, clear spray sealant stuff, uh, plastic sealer, whatever. It's all over those rocks. So basically, they're they look like cool rock shelves, but they feel uh-huh. like plastic. Right. Um, and I did that, and then one of them is a giant rock like thing that you would have on the back of this with a ledge it almost looks like a giant t and i'm mm-hmm. like and he's like you don't want that where are you gonna put him like i don't know yet but i'll figure it out <laughs> like no. and I'm like, oh it's coming <laughs> like so i just am constantly like you know what once we move get a big display cage don't know what's gonna go in it but that rock ledge is gonna be central part so <laughs> um and i like that idea i'm like dude i like the fact that the rhinos got like the really Maybe I'll cool be- breeding kimberly rocks by then i don't like, know no no why would you do this to me <laughs> don't do that i don't know there's listen i got i came over to your house and i got out of there without looking at the kimberly rock monitors you did i did you did yeah. yes i was uh, it was close but i was uh quite uh surprised at that well, I, I think you did that on purpose i did because dude it's <laughs> it's only a matter of time it's there's certain things in my life that are only a matter of time Yes. Did I tell you that there's a giant screen cage in the garage that's almost as tall as me? No. Okay. That's not mine. Uh-oh. That's only a matter of time for what? The uh, squirrel well, number two? Wants or... a ah. Mm. Oh, <laughs> now you're mm. going to be the gecko mm. guy. I don't want it. I don't want the lichianus. Yeah, but come on, man. <laughs> that's, see that, that, and that in lies the problem. Oh, wouldn't it be cool? Exactly. That, that in lies oh, the problem. Yeah. Is it be like, you know, I hate you. I hate you. And then, like, she goes away, and I got to take care of her for the weekend. I'm like, all right, this thing's kind of cool. Like, and that's, it wears yeah. you down. And then I'm like, you know, it'd be fun getting another one. And then, yeah. So, yeah, I never got into them. Like, well, I mean, I think they remind me too much of my dog. Exactly. It'd be like Roxy running on the ceiling. It'd be really weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're cool lizards. I'm just are. saying for me, like I've never been like um, drawn to want to keep them. Or whatever, I've never been know? drawn to geckos. I've never been drawn to geckos. And I guess it's just because I'm a very loud and, you know, pet the bunny too hard Lenny kind of a person. <laughs> So, and I don't want an animal well, that's going to come into pieces if I touch it. Like, and- I think, I, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think, though, the thing with geckos mm. is you have to change your mindset, right? You do. So your mindset with snakes is, is that, like, well, for some people, right, you want to have, like, all these different species and mm-hmm. you're not necessarily caring so much about, um, uh, you know, how like you're not going out of your way to make it crazy fancy because a lot of times if you're if you're dealing with like large especially if you're dealing with larger snakes mm-hmm. right you're going to need larger cages in order to be able to accomplish that but the thing with geckos is that you can keep a tremendous amount of species in small exoterrors and you mm-hmm. can have such a variety that um you know could could sort of scratch that itch if you will right yeah you know? but i almost feel like it- I mean, let's put it this way. If I were to get geckos, it would be the mossy leaf tails. Because he mentioned, yeah, can you imagine having a setup of that? Like the Australian leaf tails? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, or just the mossy ones, the ones that like can lay down flat on a tree and disappear. Yeah, well, yeah. there's the Australian ones. I mean, then- probably, yeah. Because, because, oh, okay. I didn't know I mean, if you were be, like dead would, set on the Australian ones. Or I, not. I mean, I wouldn't really care that. I'm not going to go deep dive into it. I would just want to buy the gecko and then paint the trees or the enclosures to make it match so that the thing could just like lay down and disappear and the lichen and stuff like that. So, yeah. But I even then, it would be a big setup that I wouldn't want to touch it. Like, and I don't understand the disconnect. Like, I don't think people who keep like mores like the big eels and stuff like that are constantly yeah. like you know what i should pull him out of that tank until he loves me like i don't think that's something that they do i'm pretty sure they just set it up to look at it right. so yeah yeah i was trying to look up the uh leaf hail geckos well you know the, so like to me the the species i think of is um amicola mm. right that's uh ones that are found in queensland but the cool thing about those you know leaf tails is like there some some places they're only on this like specific group of rocks. Right, that's it. You know what I mean? There's nowhere else. That's the that's where they blend in. They leave the rocks. <laughs> they die. <laughs> like it is. They're yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, it's it's they're really on cool. they're on my they're on my short list. But you know, I, I think <clears throat> like um, I think you would be surprised. I, I'm with you, man. For Not years, now, this... I never thought that I would keep geckos. I never thought I, I'd have I, a tortoise, but. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> what have we become, man? I don't what know. I, don't, I mean, <laughs> we're just shells of our old existence. Can you, can, you sit, can you sit down and have that like season one episode of it's like, <laughs> what do you guys keep? Oh, I would never do this. It's like, well, son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, I remember because yeah. I think at one point uh, you asked me the dream species. And I'm like, black face, white lip. And it's like, holy shit. I have like four of them. <laughs> like, it is just. So let me ask that question. Yep. Let, let, let's go off of that question real yep. quick. So like, okay, going back to 2011, what's your dream species? White lip python. Do yeah. you have them? Yeah. Do you add another one now? D- dude, you always got to climb the hill. You always got to chase. You always so got to chase the whale. always chasing something. You always got to chase the whale. Like even then, even with you and you're like, I'm slimming down bullshit. You have. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> let's call it like it is. Um, yeah. You have a white whale still. You have to. Even well, if yeah, it's not you, exactly, even if it's not a carpet, it could be a new gecko. You have something that's on your radar. My thing is I have that a very I've, the problem yeah. is, is that I, I I set the flag way too obtainable <laughs> way back in 2011. Now yeah, well. I've picked that thing so far away, it yeah, may that, never happen. It and, may never happen. Yeah, it, it's it's landed firmly on a pair of Owen Pelly pythons. Yeah. So see, like for me, I have a list Mm -hmm. and that list hasn't changed much um, since back then, other than maybe things have come off of it or maybe things have changed. Mm -hmm. But like if I had an Owen Pelly and Imbricata, uh, yeah, I'd pretty much be, 
I'd be done. <laughs> like yeah, that. And Owen Pelly and Nimbricata, and I breed them together to call it the Jasper Wally Dingo. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> no. Exactly. Please God, no. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's, uh, yeah, but um, I don't know. That's the only I snakes I had. So I figured I'd put them why? together. <laughs> um, What's wrong with you? Insanity. Um, but it's like I would like to, you know, and that's the flag. But there are little steps. Where yeah. like in the next couple of years, I want to I want to breed more species that I have in my house. You know, okay. there there's a lot of shit here. <laughs> They've been here, and every season they're just like, I, I I don't know why you keep putting her in here. Like I don't I don't want her to be in here. I don't want to go in there. And then they just so I'm slowly getting that. I actually um I built over the weekend. I, I drilled through another bridge. Um, mm -hmm. in the cages that I have my six footers because I'm going to move my Kribo into those cages uh, probably in another month so that I can cool them down, kind of toy with them a little bit more. And mm -hmm. also when it comes to giving access, all I have to do is again, open up that um, thing. Um, and then the next step is to put a bridge with the gold face white lip, not doing anything with them yet for other reasons. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but that is the idea. And I would love to start check, like just checking off some of those species. So, you know, people are asking like, what are your next things? It's like, well, this year in the midst of all the wedding stuff, I at least wanted to pair my ring Python. Cause okay. I wanted to get a pair of ring Python. So we're going to see how that one goes, depending on how baby snake sales are going. I wanted to do that. And I wanted to try to pair the Angolan Python because I want to go down the road and try to see if I can get them because at this point, like last year I was like, Holy crap, I got mad hog eggs this year. I'm like, Oh my God, there's too many mad hog eggs. Like it's <laughs> so <laughs> I have to, I always have to keep pushing it to keep trying to see what else I can do. So, so I don't really hear you talk about like your approach to breeding those mad hogs. And I know you're going to tell me just like I put boy with girl. I mean, that's how it goes. Yes and no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Riley and I had that, those, those discussions and that's, you know, uh, as much as I love the fact that Riley sent me his trio, I hate it because I don't have him to bounce ideas off of anymore. I mm -hmm. mean, I do, but all, he's not, he does not, he's not, yeah, so he's he's not, not going to do something different or something right. like that. So there's no, it's now all on me. So he mm -hmm. and I had that discussion because mine were still growing up when he got his first clutch. And mm -hmm. the way we figured it out is that these things can be so flighty and all over the place that it's better to just cohab. And they seem to give each other some space and room and they'll hang out with each other and they'll, you know, they'll go away from each other. And if the cage is big enough, it works out for them. Um, okay. So that's what he and I kind of decided. And that's what I've stuck to is cohabbing my pair. Um, and then I do cohab the trio that I got from Riley and I'm growing up another female that I got from Riley. That was his captive born and bred. And the mm -hmm. idea is to just have a trio over here and a trio over there which will be cool and um, possibly even swapping males so that I get, cause my original pair are related. So okay. swapping them out to get all unrelated stuff coming, which is cool because this year I have seven eggs from one pair and I have seven eggs from another pair. So I could potentially have unrelated babies to hand out there, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, is there a high, dim Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And I mean, they, so the other thing is that through, talking with that with Riley and then through talking with um, other people about false water Cobra and mm -hmm. how the food regimen regime is for a false water Cobra. The problem I have is that people tend to treat Madagascar hog nose like Western hog nose mm -hmm. and you shouldn't No, It's is it from completely different right, places. Right. 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 And even though yeah. it's a hog nose, it's a diet, Dr. Pepper, it's a diet, Dr. False water cobra. That's what it is. So okay. the second you treat it more like a false water cobra is the second it starts doing well. And it starts eating like crazy. They get that giant size and they breed. I mean, my guys. So they're really hands off. They are. I mean, well, 
I try to be hands off with them. They're not I mean, as, I mean, they're definitely big displays. I haven't seen that much of a craziness from them since they were little. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that the males are not nice to each other. Uh, I, my blondes turned out to be two boys and the both of them just shed and I can, it took them months to heal from what they did to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Melissa and I were talking about potential stitches and stuff like that. They were, and they were only in okay. together for a night. So that happens. But I would say food for them is, uh, I mean, I feed heavy. Uh, they usually get one bowl of food, but that's filled with fish, quail eggs, uh, rodents, <laughs> everything else i can pour into there and it's like exotic it. food buffet it is it is it's it's, it's, it's a, like normally for them the mad hog food is normally like one large mouse uh, uh -huh. maybe two or three chicks quail eggs if i got them a couple of the silver side fish the ones with like the heads cut off and everything else is removed you can get them at the store those right. if not chunks of tilapia go in there i fed them scallops before in the fat past and then uh frog leg each if they got it okay. and that's usually what's in the bowl substitute this that and the other thing and also um they do go off food when i start fucking with their temps and stuff like that but uh -huh. it's not that long i mean they eat everything in sight dude wow i gotta figure i gotta tweak it a little bit because the males are getting huge and one's getting a little chunky and the females <laughs> though because they keep laying eggs are right where i want them to be so right I think the males are going to have a very unhappy time is because now they've been pushed over to the you're a proven breeding male category, which means food will now become <laughs> scarce for you. So, um, yeah. Sucks to be a Sucks breeder. Sucks to be you, man. It <laughs> really does. Um, and then, like, I have um, – it's weird because it changes. Like, I have my speckled hog nose, mm -hmm. and they're completely different. Them and the blondes, they only eat an extra large mouse every 14 days. But my okay. one speckled hog nose does not like to take adult mice. It likes to do the nest rating. So what okay. you do is you go and you buy a bunch of live rat pups, fuzzies, uh -huh. stuff like that. Right. And you put them in a bowl with like the bedding from the box that every breeder will send you with. And it'll clear right. out the whole bowl of all the pups. And then gotcha. it might not eat until the next time I go to a reptile show. But – that's fine. Okay. I'm trying to trick it by making it eat like frozen thawed, but like it won't, re it doesn't really do that. And then I accidentally became a rodent breeder again over the weekend. I saw that. That was pissed me off. <laughs> I, I saw that. <laughs> that pissed me off so bad. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like, I heard them. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Hi, though, before Melissa says oh, something. I'm sitting, <laughs> well, then I'm sitting here. I'm like, all right, well, I have a breeding pair of mice. Well, you know, that might be useful coming for this season. So, you know uh, what? I'll remove, because I had three, I have three mice remaining. I'm like, I'll remove, uh, I, you know, if I have an extra male, I'll throw them in with somebody else. They'll eat them and I'll have a pair. I have two right. females and a male. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like it is. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then I have like 30 something pinkies in a corner. Yeah, I, dude, I wish I could breed my own rodents. It's not hard. <laughs> no, I, I know it's not hard, but you know, I, I, I don't think I can do it for multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, I really don't have a place to do it, mm -hmm. being the most important. That is and a good one. Two, yeah. I just don't know if I would survive like the cleaning part of it, or it's. I uh, the good thing is is that Melissa just from asthma, right? Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? The allergies, dude. And, I will say that um, pine shaving beddings are the worst things possible ever. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's different bedding types at the lab at Penn. We used to use corn cob bedding, which was like thin little corn pellets, those were great. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get some right. of that. Um, at the house, Melissa uses what's called feline pine for the cat litter boxes, mm -hmm. it's basically mm -hmm. sawdust compressed into these little like pellets right. and i just steal that and use it for the rodents and that works okay um right. but that's that's one cage man and luckily yeah. for me one cage is probably going to be enough for any problem feeders that i have and this that and the other thing um it you know what i probably am gonna keep these mice hanging around for a while because 
if it works, it works. You know, I, I, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, well, if I let her take care of them to the point that they're like fuzzies or hoppers, I might have some snakes in the ground by then that might, if some are giving me trouble, it'd be really nice to have access to fuzzies and hoppers. Yeah. Cause last year yeah. I couldn't get anything. So. Oh, you couldn't, what do you mean? You yeah, the, get the local to... pet store that I oh, have. You couldn't usually, get anything. Yeah. I gotcha. The local Live, pet store I have, I, it was, it couldn't, they, they had a shortage. Um, uh, a lot of guys, a lot of times that the rodent guys are um, charging extra for live because, mm -hmm. you know, and then people are buying it, then it's not even worth them to, you know, euthanize. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So that, and I, I'm always looking for the easy way to feed the snake. Again, mm -hmm. we, we've talked about this a bunch of times. Like, what do you want to eat? Cool. I will get that for you. Please stay alive. <laughs> like, it's all I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me and uh, Dan were talking about, um, he had heard, uh, Dan Colgan, he had mm. heard that uh, I talked about the pygmy pythons that I had mm -hmm. got. And, um, they're cool. <laughs> yeah, man. They're so cool. They're Aren't so they tiny. Small? Oh, they're so <laughs> tiny. It was. Like, yeah. You were like, you should check these things out. I'm like, oh, ain't oh my God. The, yeah. The dude, it, you have, <sighs> yeah. Melissa wants, <laughs> Melissa wants your Stimpsons. Oh, does she? I tell you, oh, she, yeah, that's right. She she, she really likes Mel Stimpsons. Melissa bred yeah. Stimpsons. Yeah. Yeah, Melissa had Stimmies. Melissa bred Stimmies, and she keeps telling me that she wants to get a pair of Stimpsons pythons, and I'm like, you are never allowed to talk to Justin Julander. And she's like, what? I'm like, you are never allowed to talk to Justin Julander. Like, you know, don't you dare put that out there. So, right. yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, my anteresia they look cool yeah that group to be honest pattern that, dude that one i must yeah i'm a sucker for contrast i i think it was a spotted python right well yeah i have uh what do i have uh everything uh, <laughs> i have a pair of cape york spotted yeah and then i have the one that you saw that was striped that just wanted to eat me yes uh the and then i have were cool too Oh yeah, the wheat belts. Yeah, yeah. they're the western stems, yeah. and then the eastern stems mm. are they. I got them from Matt Moyle, and uh, goodness, man, they are beautiful. Yeah, oh, they're so nice. I don't know why Antaricia is so. more like. You see all the Antaricia popularity going on in Australia, and it just makes you think: Why is an Antaricia more popular here? I think they're just always looked at as the dirt snake. I think that just because of the the difficulty of getting them established I, as babies, I think they have that stigma. Yeah, you know. Um, but I mean, as far as pythons go, if yeah. you're buying a captive, born and bred animal, right? I mean, you're pro. I I, I had. I mean, I I the ones that I have, I've bought from breeders mm -hmm. and they've all come eating you know um i've never experienced trying to get them to that spot mm -hmm. um you know fortunately uh we have justin that we can just talk to and you know he he seems to be pretty successful with the anteresia and uh getting everything going so i'm sure he has a whole bunch of tricks and um you know uh to get them going and i don't know it to a certain extent right it maybe if it falls into what you always say is just give them what they want so yeah. i don't know well it's, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah well them, it's it, they I want mean, little lizards yeah give it a lizard it's um i think that there's a stigma to that they are hard animals to keep and hard animals to get feeding and i would I agree so. but and I think like maybe at one point they were, but that has to be getting easier every freaking time. Like I would love to get uh, some, some Eastern hognose. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the American version of, uh, of a freaking false yeah. water cobra. Like that's what we're getting at here. I would love right. to get that. Plus they're gorgeous, but toads, toads, toads. Well, you just have to take a trip to the get toads. Every <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, so what They're I have everywhere. To, so what I have to do is go to a certain point, grab as many toads as possible, grab a year's worth of toads when the toads are out, freeze them, and then go from there. I'm, ign I'm ignorant to eastern hogs. Have they been bred 
So, I think they fall into the same thing, right? Because they of have, the fact I, that they only eat right. toads. I think they have been bred. I just right. don't think they have been bred regularly. And I don't think they have been produced to the point where you would see them possibly breaking of those toad or wanting amphibian things. So I think that so, when they have been produced, it's been a bear to get them all eating or something like that. So, so is it a matter of uh, they, you know, most of the people that maybe if, if they have success with mm -hmm. them, they're basically keeping everything yeah. that they produce so yeah. that they have a, that a, a or, or they have a, they have a, the people who are producing them have access. Like they they have a place on their land that gets a bunch of toads or they don't mind doing it. And they're giving it away to other people who are kind of like-minded in this, that, and the other thing. But I would say that there's not a lot done because if you look at like the amount of stuff that's done with Western hogs compared to Eastern hogs is ridiculous. And why, again, I'm ignorant Western to hog can wear a mustache and a top hat. That's why. But, but why are they easier to, is it just I somebody don't think did they the work? Were. I don't think they right. were. Okay. I think they somebody just, because I've talking, I've spoken with Western hognose breeders that say that every once in a while they get one that hatches that you got to throw a toad at it. Maybe because of where they're from. Maybe. Maybe the Western hogs are more likely to take a rodent rather than an Eastern where, I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. walk through the Pine Barrens, there's toads, toads everywhere, everywhere, right? You know, so you can yeah. see why they're feeding on on that, right. you know? Right. So I would say that Westerns have been bred so much that it's so far behind. It's, and this is just from like, I was talking with a couple breeders who, we're interested in rhinos and I'm like, Hey, you know, you might like take this thing home. It's eating rodents, scented rodents, but you may have to go get some guppies, which fine. Go to any pet smart, get guppies. But, and they're like, Hey, I have Western hog nose. Like every once in a while, I got to go get a toad. Like it's, I'm used to it. I'm like, okay. Now, of course I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, what would happen if I thawed out some pinkies or fuzzies in some hot water with a frog leg that I was going to feed to somebody else. Cause what I do with the rhinos is I'll thaw out their hoppers, fuzzies, whatever it is with the fish that I'm about to feed to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that works. And then once a week, they also get a live minnow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would think too, like if they're so like, if they're so, um, I like, do they change as so? Like, I, again, I'm, I'm ignorant to this, mm. but I guess as Western hogs, as they get older, do they switch? So, like, with Anteresia, right? Mm -hmm. They're you eating gotta push them past small the geckos, point. but yeah. once they get past that point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are, you know, I think pygmy pythons are probably the exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. Um, that they pretty much stay in that lizard skink, right most of their lives, but they will, you know, you can get them switched over the rodents, obviously, because they are established and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think they, again, I, I don't know this to be fact, but I think that probably like say children's Python is probably a little more uh, doable in that range, yeah. probably because they, they are taking some form of mammal at right. some point of their lives. Right. But with Eastern hogs. Yeah. Are they stay like they, they, they don't change, right? They they stay. Well, I mean, compared to the, the the size of toads that we get around here, I mean, a nice size American toad is about that big. Mm -hmm. And then you want to keep going. We have pickerel frogs, we have green frogs, we have amphibians that can get to the size of a of a small rat almost. Well, what we would feed, right? So, does it change from amphibian? Probably not. I feel like there's a whole bunch of Eastern hognose people in the world going, what are these two idiots talking about? What are these two about? morons talking about? <laughs> Just from what I'm seeing, like, you know. Yeah, I, I don't I, know anything about them. Right. I okay. would say maybe they don't. Maybe they do. I don't know. I've never kept them, so I don't know what to tell you with that one. But I, in, my, in my insanity, I'm becoming more and more confident and more and more like, Maybe I could do Eastern hog nose. Eventually, I'm going to hit a wall with these colubrids where I find one that just does not thrive under me or does not do you seem to have the, the yeah, thing. You seem to have that knack mm. to be able to... If it's a hoover, yeah. If it's a if it's a colubrid that'll eat anything that comes in front of it, 
I seem to yeah. be all right with it right now. So, um, yeah. I guess my question is, couldn't you feed those adult Eastern hogs mm. frog legs? Maybe. It, it, you know what? It, if you're like, oh, the frog leg's too big, cut it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> But don't East... Am I wrong? Eastern hogs get... I mean, they get pretty they get some nice size, size on them, right? but yeah. yeah okay. So if they're growing up, like I, I, we've already talked about how I've gotten like my false water cobra when they were tiny. I got them to eat frog legs by cutting up the frog leg. Yeah. Yeah. They'll eat it. Hmm. Like it doesn't need to look like a frog. It just got to smell like one. I'll take a shot at it. So, I mean, and you're right in their range. Mm. I mean, we live where Eastern hogs yeah. live. So it's not yeah. like, you know, temperatures. And yeah. This is, Humidity this is dangerous and, conversation. Oh, dear. This is very dangerous <laughs> yeah, conversation I, I we're having. Yeah. Huh. You know what I'm going to look up right now? No, say. please I'm no. Just, I'm just curious. Eastern. Eastern hog nose. Hog <laughs> or sale. For sale. Hmm. You're probably going to get every other hog nose on the planet but an eastern. East, oh, <laughs> it, put, it pulled up pigs. <laughs> I put eastern hogs for sale. Eastern hog nose. No snakes. You have to spell Snake. it out for Google. Yes, I forgot. Mm-hmm. Sale. Sorry. Okay. Oh wait. Oh. oh no, these are these are hogs. Eastern hog back. Oh wait, here we go. Uh, Backwater reptiles. Oh, all right. I uh, I don't know who they are or or, or what they. Uh, Good name though. <laughs> Backwater reptiles. Yeah. Yeah. I got the uh, dreaded spin of death here, so it's, uh, <laughs> it might not. Lots be of western up. hogs, but that's not what I asked. I yeah. asked for. It. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, mm. we're getting something now. Mm. Uh oh, and you better get the credit card. No, out. no, 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 no. I don't have no, no, no snakes can be purchased except ones that have already been made deals for. Uh, can you collect them? I don't know. One hundred twenty-nine bucks. Really? Yes, one hundred twenty-nine bucks. Damn. Hmm. You know what we should ask about such we things? We probably shouldn't have uh, said that. On yeah, the no, radio we shouldn't have said that one know, on there. Yeah, if it's illegal, I, I, I they know how upset the... you get. Yeah. Um. <laughs> when everybody beats you to the I mean, you to listen, do. only ever lost a done eye once, God damn it. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, she only did produce the first clutch in the United States. Years. Yeah. I'm not bitter, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um wow. You okay. know who we should uh we should probably ask if this is legal to collect is we should probably ask Mr. Stone. He might know. American reptile distribute distribution, 199 bucks. Mm. There are sold out though. No. Oh. Eastern hogs thrive in wooded areas and are thick-bodied, sometimes referred to as puff adders. What? No, what? Uh, <laughs> these are captive born. Sometimes referred to as puff adders. No, no, no. Those are different. <laughs> <laughs> Eas- easily dis- <laughs> distinguished because of their upturned snout. Um, they're native to the eastern United States. Uh, the food, they eat amphibians and scented pinkies. So mm. these are, are babies, but um, uh, they, they're, they're on 200 the bucks, man. Wow. That, wait. I, I, I know they're pretty. they're pretty. They're pretty. They're pretty. Wow, they're cool, man. They're pretty. <laughs> That's the problem. They're pretty. Oh, you're done now, bro. Yeah. I'm sending yeah. this to you. No. You're done. You're no. like, oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, here it comes. Incoming. Yep. Uh, damn it yeah they're i know cool, it's aren't they? gorgeous it kind of looks like a false water cover a little i bit. know and that's what you got to think of it as and they get they get very dark and stuff like that but they're so pretty yeah maybe that'll oh, be yeah. the you know, the problem is is that we have to we have to pair the angolan we have to pair the the ring we have to pair the baird's racer which that thing is i I'm so mad it took me this long to get that thing. That thing is great, dude. Yeah. Oh, the Baron's Racer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So do you find yourself struggling um, with the notion that, you know, mm-hmm. you have these crazy python species that are giving you difficulty, then you have you know, <laughs> these colubrids that are supposed to give people difficulty, and yet somehow they seem I mean, to grieve I think for that, you. I, you I, think I, like, are you ever torn to say like, ah, tell the pythons, get all the pythons anymore. All the time, all the damn time. Are you? Yeah. But I would say that 
none of the stuff that I've done call your bread wise would even, um, I mean like none of this stuff, I'm definitely not on like a forefront or anything. People have done all these things. So, but, Oh yeah. I, you know, I and that. I would say that, but I do have some good success. I mean, but it would be cool. Dude, I see you like tiger splodies, like the oh, tiger dude, rat awesome. snakes. Like, come no, on. I can't do that. I can't do tigers. Why? I don't it's know. So in your there's, wheelhouse, there's a block man. in my head Big, about tigers. Angry, yeah. colubrid. There's a block in my head about tigers. To rip your really? Yeah. Wow. Well, it just surprises me. Well, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous, but I don't know if I could get if if I could get the goddamn blue beauties to do something. Then maybe I'll start dipping into some of the longer, you know, Asian rat snakes. But we gotta. Just the other thing is, I gotta get the blue beauties figured out. I gotta get the Chinese king rats figured out. I gotta get the false water cobra up to size and figured out, even though they're doing that against my will. I'm like, slow down, and they just keep growing. Like, I need to get them into bigger cages. The falsies. A am I wrong in saying that those um, tiger rat snakes? They're the ones that just engulf their prey, like in a matter of seconds. I mean, right? they're, I mean, they're just like they gotta eat quick, man. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. There's a lot of that kind of stuff where it's like. I, I I should if I could take pictures of it, I would. It's just it's so hard to catch them because I'll put all the dishes in and then I'll leave the mm -hmm. snake room and I'll come back in and literally there'll be a Kribo with like a chunk of fish, a chicken, and like half a mouse in its mouth, and it's trying to eat all of them at the same time. And that goes for all the culprits. They just like have mouths full of food. They just go right. nuts and they just quickly eat it and keep going. It's hilarious. Um, you know, and I think about your, um, you know, you just got the Mandarin too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I got to figure I got to call Riley on that one. I don't think it likes me trying to present food to it. <laughs> like it, it definitely did not like that. So uh -huh. it might be one of those, like leave the food in the corner and then back away slowly. So, but yeah, yeah. that, that, that thing's cool. That thing's pretty too. What the tiger rat? No, thing? the Mandarin's awesome. Oh, oh god I... damn it. <laughs> Why did you do that to me? Ugh. Yeah. That's yeah, you know what? If we get a if when we move and we get a nice really big display cage and I can use that giant rock thing I was telling you back about, maybe I'll get some tigers. You know, I think, you know, if I were to get into a North American colubrid, you know, I, I've often pondered this when I do rat snakes, when I do king snakes, I think I would do pituophis. <laughs> I'll tell you why, man. Every time I've seen, well, I I sound like I've seen him so many times in the wild. But <laughs> like, like I love their look. Mm -hmm. I love their look, and they they always like mad, like they're like, you know? I, like I, they got this like. Brr. I actually have a really good chance of getting a uh, clutch in northern pines head albino this year. Oh really? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Of course, the yeah. other pair turned out to both be boys, but. The one pair looks good. <laughs> like right. it's, yeah. Um are they the, the pituophis isn't difficult to breed, right? I mean, I mean it's, gotta try, but I, right. I I've I bred them before. Carpet I bred, level. I am um, kinda. I mean, I, I did I would say step up from a corn snake because you gotta pay pay attention. Um okay. so and I, I've done pine snakes before when I worked for the zoo, and then I did um bull snakes. But it's weird because so at the zoo we had northern pine snakes and then we had stillwater hypos. And okay. I could never get the goddamn stillwaters to breathe. But mm -hmm. I could get the pine snakes to breathe like clockwork every year. Mm -hmm. Um the bulls, I got them all to breed in one season. It was great because you got like albino white sideds and all this other stuff like that. And I wish to God I had kept those bulls. Um now with the uh pines, I got I had a pair and then I lost what I thought was the male. So I picked up a male albino. And I think now what actually ended up happening is I lost the female. And mm -hmm. then last year I traded some mad hog babies for a pair of adult pines. And mm -hmm. now I have them breeding. So I might have to rearrange some things because pine snakes, I like them because they're, like you said, they're mouthy cusses and they're just always look like they're pissed off bulldog kind of a triangle face and yeah they have a very uh they, have, they just have a very specific mm -hmm. face to them that just mm -hmm. is very well i guess it's not it, 
to me, it's unique, you know, mm-hmm. I just see it and I'm just like, oh, wow. That's, it's that's it's really different. Cool. So, you know, what I was thinking about doing is depending on how the season goes, I might cut loose one of my extra boys and then it comes down to, you know, do I keep chasing this het albino stuff or do I just focus on having a nice pair of pines over here? And does that open me up to get like maybe a cool pair of gophers or something else? So, yeah, I'm always sort of um, confused about the whole, you know, what's a pine snake? What's a gopher snake? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. what's a, uh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. what, a, what a pine snake, gopher snake, and pine snake, gopher snake, bull snake. Yeah. Bull snake. It's, it's hard. <laughs> it just depends on where they are. It's but, the same goddamn thing. It just seems to be changing as people like where you go. Yeah, that was your gopher snake. God, that thing was pretty. Yeah, man. And then the one we saw in Texas. Yeah, well, that's the problem, man. It's like I see these things. I'm like, you know what? I should collect this and then I'll come back later and I'll find a mate for it. And it would just drive me up a fucking wall because, the, dude, the one we saw in Arizona was really pretty. Yeah, yeah, was, no, yeah, hundred percent. Well, can't do it. I don't. I don't know if I saw. Yeah, I, I did see that. Yeah, I mm-hmm. did see them. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think if I, I think they, they, they would probably be the ones that I would go after. But yeah, maybe in another life. <laughs> <laughs> for now, I'll just see them in the wild. That that that's enough for me. I think the uh, the other one that I've always been fascinated with would be indigos, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm just sort of. Uh... That's another thing. Like, I, I need to focus and get the fucking Kribo off the bench because two years I got nothing but slugs. This year I got nothing. No right. slugs, no nothing. And right. Mike Curtin is like, look at all my yellowtail Kribo eggs. And I'm like, God damn Is he it. doing anything different? Have you picked his uh, brain? He, and like, I what's... Talked. he does yeah. a lot of fish feeding, a lot, That's a lot right. of fish feeding. Um, well, he is a fisherman. I mean, he does do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's this time of year where my curtain is a, is a, is awake yeah. till three a.m. and in the water somewhere. <laughs> like it is, um, so he does a lot of fish feeding. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder why that would make a difference. I don't know. I I really don't know if it would make a difference at all. I don't know if it's just because of the the way he's feeding it or how often he is um Mm -hmm. i do think i need to definitely put the food to my mail this season uh, or this summer and i Mm want to get them both kind of acclimated because the other thing is that i think i didn't introduce them until it was too late and what i like about doing with them is kind of the same thing i'm doing with the team horses it gives them a chance to get away from each other and if they're away from each other i can seal it off and feed them like i do with the team horse so right. yeah yeah i think about like some of the crazy well between like you mm-hmm. and um uh keith and rob and some of like the crazy colubrids that you guys have is like you know dude do you have any idea like i want 100 flower rat snakes it hurts so bad yeah <sighs> <laughs> Uh, those I will get those. Those will be mine. Somebody sent you a picture of them the other day, right? Wasn't Riley, he went to some place and he had a whole handful full of He's fucking like, hundred flowers. This. He's like, look at it, Owen. And I'm like, now, and <laughs> that's when I told him, like, now I will send you the super secret wedding registry. <laughs> 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 These are all the snakes that you can send me. <laughs> like it was, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and dude, I was. That's the problem. Is I was looking at Hamburg. I was looking at Coxeye. Coxeye are cool, yeah. man. Coxeye, I, I, always, I always thought they were they were they were well, really uh really cool. Me, but let me see if I can breed, let me see if I can keep the mandarins alive and breed them. If I can, then I'll dip into Coxeye. If I'm not mistaken, I think the key to those is they're they're kept much cooler mm-hmm. than your average which is why I, I have mandarins fall into that same group, right? Right, Don't which they? is why I have I have the cages set up in the front of my snake room. They're um, you know, those like one by one kind of like cube things I had that were made up of the leftover PVC when I had my original cages built. Yes. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I got those and I built, I built bridges in them. Same thing okay. that the team wars have, but on a much smaller scale. Okay. So, so now they're all set up. So when they're all open, it's the equivalent of having a, 
you know, almost a three foot cage. Gotcha. So okay. I was thinking about doing that and having a mandarin here and a mandarin here and then breeding season, open it up. And then they have the whole thing. It's, you know, I think the thing with colubrids, especially like the mandarins and the cox eye and all, and all those is like, like, I love the fact that as they age, they sort of keep. They, they don't get ugly. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they, you know, tiger rats and the explodies are kind of yeah. like that. Um, You know, even king snakes, milk snakes, you know, they, they seem The colors to... do not fade, man. So. My dad has this 20, is it 20, 20, 21 year old king snake. Can legally drink. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so funny, right? It. Again, this just it just shows you the 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 struggle that that I think that um, younger people and reptiles have mm. with with talking to older people and reptiles. And I use me and my dad as an example, right? Because when he was doing snakes, you fed it every week. Yeah, you know, you fed it a mouse, mm -hmm. da, 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 and if you didn't do it, so like. This this king snakes this is a bit on the chunky side, right? Yeah, like, right, yeah. <laughs> he's at a mouse every week, you know. He gets and, slimmed um, down a little bit, yeah. Well, here's the funny thing, mm. right? He's 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 sitting there and he's he's talking to me and he's like, Yeah, I I can't get this king snake to eat. And I was like, Yeah, well, that it's it's winter time. Yeah, they leave it alone. Probably aren't gonna yeah. eat, you know, like it's down in your basement and it's 50 degrees down yeah, there. It I doesn't want to eat. Well, it still has the light yeah. on it. And I'm like, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, it's yeah, heat or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I, well, you probably want to not have heat, you know, like, I mean, just, you just can't put it down, just put it down. Yeah. yeah. Put it down, you yeah. know, and like, cause he keeps it. So the cool thing is, again, here's my dad pushing boundaries, right? We all bitch and whine and complain like, Oh, I can't keep my snakes outside. What am I going to do? <laughs> He's wheeling the goddamn. Kid. He puts it outside for the whole summer, man. <laughs> the whole summer he puts it out. Yeah. He, he, he invented this, uh, you know, so I, when we were talking about it, mm -hmm. I was like, well, what are you going to do about like raccoons or whatever? So in my dad's true sense of what he does, he MacGyver some contraption that sits on the top of the tank that is like a roof almost <laughs> that you can't get into, but the ventilation is still coming through. And it also is, is, is like an A-frame type yeah. of thing. Yeah. So that when it rains, the water comes off, the, doesn't <laughs> flood the cage and he just keeps it out in the yard. He made, a, made a snake, whole summer. snake hutch. Yeah. I mean, whole summer, whole fall. Yeah. He keeps it out there, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I, I said, well, dad, I, I, I mean, Clear, he's like, well, clearly I'm doing something right. The thing is 21 years old, so blah, blah, blah. he has like, a point. He has like a that. point. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue. With I that. can't argue with this. I, this I, is you know, like, I yeah. said, but uh, you know, there has been um, some thought that mm. uh, you know uh, us as reptile keepers from the 80s and mm. 90s mm. have probably overfed our animals and don't really need to eat as much. So yeah. I guess he was just panicking because it didn't eat in a month, and I'm like that. That I, I, I absolutely love that. Eating. <laughs> and and the problem is, is that I fall victim to that too. You can ask Melissa how pissed off I got mm -hmm. every time I offered food to my male rough scale and he right. didn't eat. Right. Because that animal his entire life has been food. Always taking it. it. Bulletproof. Right. Just eat it no matter what time it is, year it is, whatever. And I couldn't get it out of my head because I was so worried about what he is and how he you know, and all this other stuff. Right. You immediately think something's wrong. Right. Not right. that I, now he's finally living in a room with a female above him and a female below him. Him. And right. it's breeding season. And right. he's like, yeah. And no one forgets all the years and of NPR. All the, and he just the, turns it off. All, and he's yeah, like, all the knowledge, <laughs> all the shit, all everything I would ever tell anybody else is right out of my head. And I'm panicking. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but you know, again, he's, 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 he's pretty successful with mm. what he's, what he's got going. So I'm not going to, uh, yeah. going to knock it. He's producing another, another, I think he produced, I think it's four clutches of those emerald <laughs> tree tanks already. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all these like little ones i went there like a couple weeks at mm -hmm. easter yeah i went there at easter and i was he got a new uh dart frog and uh, <laughs> it, i don't know the species but it's the blue one the blue oh. and the black 
So he has the yellow and the Jerry? black. Now he's got the blue and the black. I yeah, he know. used the Luca Mellos, which are nice. I always like them. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's the, another uh, one. I would love to have a giant tank that was set up and have a ton of dart frogs in there. And then the thing is, I would want to have somebody who I could pay to come and deal with it. <laughs> like, I just don't want to. I don't think I could deal with it, but. I think it, uh, I think he likes the idea. I, mm. so I, I've been thinking about this and I was sort of, we had like a long talk when mm. we were the last time I was there hanging out with him. And, um, I think he likes the idea of lizards because he's dealing with them every day. Right. Yeah. I think Fun he likes do. that yeah. where with the snakes, he has the one snake, the king snake, but when he had snakes, it was sort of like a once a week thing. Or, it is, you know, yeah, you know that kind of thing. Where it's like, whereas with these, he's sort of like maintaining the cage or mm -hmm. you know clipping stuff or whatever. And, um, you know, even with his, uh, he was telling me, you know, about his bioactive stuff that he has. Like he, you know, he's like, well, that does that doesn't just it doesn't appear like that. Like, <laughs> it doesn't work just come that, that way. Like, <laughs> you know, I gotta trim this and do that, but like. I don't know what it is about him with plants, but like he and my sister has a lot of that. It, mm. It's like they're they're super in tune with similar to how we are with snakes. Right. If if we see a, we're looking at a snake. We right. Can kind you, of tell you know something's wrong just wrong by looking at it. Or, yeah. You know, this one is healthy or this one needs, you know, this or that or whatever. But mm. like um, and again, I think even with that, like he 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 was telling me that he's what they call an overwaterer. Like he over too much water. And like, okay. If you, hear, if you watch some YouTube stuff, then like I was trying to learn about things. Yeah. They were saying about how, like, you have to you have to sort of feel the thing and this and that. And he's like, no, I I do it from the bottom, and that's how I water them. He waters them from the bottom and lets the plant soak it up. So, that's so weird. Yeah, but, not from the top. Yeah, no. I, all right. Apparently, I smacked my well, hand like the one day. I'm like, you know, I was like, he's like, no, no. <laughs> what are you doing, ah. <laughs> Miyagi son? No, <laughs> just <laughs> paint the fence. I, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but the rain comes from the sky. <laughs> into the ground. Understand. This is the ground. <laughs> no. It jokes the ground and the roots draw it up. Like I wait, uh, I don't. Yeah. But again, man, he's got these like crazy monstera plants and like all these That's rare, like, crazy plants that are like impossible. Like, well, he's clearly wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't argue. Your dining room is a jungle. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I murder say. plants by looking at them. Like, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Well, I've been listening to them mm. to him, mm. and I've been pretty successful with the plants that I had. Where in the past I would have killed Several. everything <laughs> at this point, you know. But uh, my stuff has grown pretty good, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. That's I good. I, 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 I am not very good with plants. I, that's why I most of the ones in the rhino cage are fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know. yeah. I usually go to Lowe's and get the um, uh, the please like the the I'm dying plant for like five dollars and stick it in a right. cage and then you know if it lives it lives it doesn't it doesn't so. I guess the only thing that I would think about that plants could offer as um as a uh, a plus to mm. keeping say a reptile in a mm -hmm. cage would be maybe you would uh, you could help with the air quality or you could help with the humidity by having you know yeah. a certain plant in in the cage and you know um, <laughs> I used them as hides um, when I had the mangrove monitors I used to put um, hanging plants up mm -hmm. high. Like I just mm -hmm. get a bunch of hanging plants and they'd come and they'd literally dig into the the dirt around the plant a little bit and they'd hide in there amongst all like the, the oh, no hanging shit. down stuff. So they, they like that. Um, and then I did that for a couple of them. So like I have a few plants, like I have the, the a couple plants in my office. I got that, that big guy right here. Mm -hmm. He was in a monitor cage <laughs> and when the monitors, when I got rid of the monitors, I'm like, this plant is still alive. And I just shoved it in a pot. Um, right. And I did that with another uh, plant downstairs. Um, and it just, it's been okay so far. But um, right. for the, I have two plants inside the false water cobra cage. And it's just grass. And the grass kind of like wilted it down. And now they kind of hide around the base of this um, pot. Because it's almost okay. like you have to, it's almost like a, they can kind of it's brush it's something they can hide in so right yeah cool yeah 
Cool. All right. Um, I don't know. We're about an hour and a half. Um, I got, I'll, I'll close out with this. Mm. As we prepare for our October trip, I got that book. The Reptiles of Queensland. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ah. Uh. I can't wait. That's right. I'm sitting here and I'm like, honey, I have the whole week of my birthday off. Do you want to go and look for timber rattlesnakes? And she's like, maybe. I'm like, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got a maybe. Maybe. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, what? Right. Maybe. <laughs> I'm like, if I asked Eric that, he'd say yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're there. We're there. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! All I have to do is bring him by that coffee place in Hamburg. He'll come with me oh. anywhere. <laughs> I I was who did I, I think I was telling my sister about it. I was like, oh, you have to stop at this place. She's like, I don't even like coffee. I was like, I don't. It care. doesn't matter. Stop there, bring me one home. <laughs> come here. Let me smell your clothes when you come in. Yeah. Since I got my espresso machine, I have been able to come pretty close to their. Oh, cappuccino. we're pretty more, close. More high end now. Do you do you drink your? little pinky out oh yeah when pinky's out man. of course pinky's out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 well i mean come, is there I'm any sitting other way here and i'm sitting here and i'm watching my my dash <laughs> hounds walk across the yard uh yes yeah the the kimberleys are <laughs> on the backs of the dash hounds as yeah. they you know walk through the yard <laughs> oh my goodness <sighs> i did see um actually i'll close with this yeah um we're we're about to do an episode on the field herping podcast mm. called herping your backyard so i've been like really paying attention to what's you know, in the yard what's in the yard and mm -hmm. what's right out there by paying attention for the last week i've seen six cardinals right yeah. which i don't know if that they're hard to find or not uh, but we have a bird feeder outside we at least have one pair that keep coming to damn it our thing so yeah we have them we have wrens and then we have um robins and then there's probably a bunch of other shit i don't know after a certain point it just becomes bird to me right but melissa's like oh look at it it's a you know something 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 and i'm like huh it's bird yeah so i've seen a turkey <laughs> um <laughs> so you know like behind my fence right yeah. where the creek is that area so this is the area what i'm talking the about is that? <laughs> like, it just, wait like... <laughs> uh, i didn't tell you the turkey story no <laughs> oh so me and dory are working in the yard or whatever and um we're we're out back and you know we go down to like that fence area and we're mm. trying to figure out what to do we're going to mulch the, mm -hmm. the like the that little uh, perimeter that's always kind of junky and overgrown so we start digging that up and whatnot and um i walk down and I, I see movement in in the in the in the thing and i look over the fence and all i hear is Whoa! <laughs> this big turkey just jumps out of nowhere and i'm like what the hell oh my god uh, scared the shit out of me and then i'm like looking at it and then the turkey's like looking at me giving me like it was like ready to get me or something i was like they're oh, not nice I'm birds not, no i know <laughs> i've seen that i'm like oh okay no i don't imagine i don't mean a, to offend you mr turkey imagine I, uh, a cassowary but smaller much smaller yeah yeah i think the cassowary was nicer to us yeah. than the turkey <laughs> Um, I've seen, uh, a family of deer walk mm. behind that fence, which mm. is kind of crazy because there's not a lot of whole room there. Right. Mm. Um, which, you know, that's not too crazy, uh, where we're at, but, um, to see it in your backyard is cool. I've seen two Dude. garter snakes, yeah. one DK snake. Nice. And, um, the other thing we saw this morning was, uh, two foxes, two red foxes yeah. walking back there. My, my, if, if you're looking for a backyard activity and if you got kids and stuff like that, uh, my friends, they went and they got a trail camera and they just set it up in their backyard and oh, cool. they have deer that come through. They have foxes, they have groundhogs. And one day he sends me a clip. He goes, what the hell are these? And he sends me and there's two coyotes walking through his yard. And he's oh, like, shit. I'm like, those are coyotes. He's like, do we have coyotes in Pennsylvania? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then I look it up and I'm like, yeah. yeah. That's so like, I, you don't think coyote, yeah. but yeah. So out on street road, you know where street road is. I do. It's like I, a main I street. I smashed a deer on that road. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so when I first moved up here, mm. I, I was driving to work. It was early in the morning. And as I'm driving, I look over and there's these apartment buildings mm -hmm. that are that are there. And it's like this big open, um, basically a big open grass field mm -hmm. until you get to the apartments. It kind of sits back a bit. And 
I'm driving by and I'm looking at this, what I think is a dog. And I'm like, what kind of dog is that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm just like driving slow because it's like four o'clock in the morning or whatever. And I'm driving and I pull up alongside of it. And I was like, that's a goddamn coyote. coyote. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, here, yeah, doggy, doggy, doggy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, never mind. Like, <laughs> no, it, no, no, your no, no, brain no. does this thing. You're like, that is not, what I'm looking at is not what I'm looking at. And then right. you're like, no, it, 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 that's the only thing it can be. Yes. And it, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I would only set up a trail cam in the back to see Sasquatch come through. And you, and unfortunately, that would never happen because your fake monkey is fake. So, no, he's real, man. No, 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 no. We'll end on that. Thank you. Uh, Oh, that's the first time I've ever said Bigfoot was real to you. The, 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 uh, no, it isn't. That is, you said that. <laughs> now you're just trying to get a rise out of me, and I won't give it to you. I'm so close. I'm so close. The button is there. It's <laughs> pushed. It's have, engaged. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's like, God damn it. God damn God it. Damn it. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, all right. We'll leave it at that. Um I was on Lizard Brain Radio um, on Sunday night. Cool. I believe you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, watch it on Bill's YouTube, Cole Black Exotics. Um, it was a good conversation. Uh, me and Justin were on there. Uh, and the whole idea was uh, people that are known for being snake keepers and have started to transition over to lizard keepers. And, you know, that whole switch and how that works so mm-hmm. that was a good conversation and we talked about podcast stuff and all that kind of stuff so yep, yep um yep. check it out uh and it's on lizard brain radio on the uh thn um network um and i also did uh i think you're up at some point owen but i did five questions with um with justin they don't uh, want me yeah. answering questions <laughs> so uh i think that comes out on wednesday on the thn youtube channel so uh, cool. check that out um boa 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 podcast <laughs> will be coming out this upcoming monday love that name. Um, <laughs> yeah. i'm so glad we did that <laughs> yeah boa 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 podcast <laughs> In case you didn't know what this podcast was about, it's Something, about I don't know, maybe. We should have called ours Python Python. Python Python Python. Python. It's it's almost like the cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. It doesn't sound as good when you say Python. No, it doesn't. Python 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 podcast. No. No. But Boa 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 podcast, you're like, oh yeah. What is it? There's this thing. I saw this something on Facebook where it's like um it's a picture of this ball python. And they're like, if your girlfriend can tell you what's wrong with this boa, she's a keeper. I'm like, I see what you did there. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Nice. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, check out all that stuff and uh, I'll share it on our stuff. And, uh, yeah, um, everything else is uh, running along and uh, should have. uh, Something's happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're (laughs) recording a gecko podcast this Wednesday. We're recording. I'm not. (laughs) <laughs> field herbing podcast on wednesday as well um i think do you have on... a pod, you have a podcast wait wait you're you're doing a gecko podcast what tuesday wednesday 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 so you have today with me you have off tomorrow you have a gecko have podcast tomorrow. wednesday you and me again thursday friday you have carpets and coffee, and coffee. <laughs> then and you saturday. have a break saturday Ooh. no you have the, no no break the, saturday, the, the, the thing saturday. Patreon. yeah sunday oh, is off Maybe Sunday's off. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I do have a jam packed week. Jesus, <laughs> stress me out. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I had a podcast yesterday with the Lizard Brain Radio, so I'm a solid week of a book solid man. You're trying it's to get me like on a podcast. It's like you have a new movie coming out, happen. and you're going on all the channels that are talking. Yeah, I'm making the rounds. We were talking about that yesterday, like we were talking about booking guests and stuff, and we were saying about how like we'll watch each other's There's shows. There's always and somebody stuff. that goes that, around to all of them. Yeah. Yeah, and like every once in a while, you'll get the person that makes the rounds to mm-hmm. where they. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just saying that there's a new book coming out soon, and if the authors of this book do not appear on Morelia Python Radio first, yes, I'm be a little pissed off. <laughs> like, you will be dead to me, sir. Dead to me. Dead to me. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, they, they, we better have it locked in since both of those authors God are on our net, right. <laughs> they better be coming on NPR first. <laughs> now out of spite, they'll be like, no, no, we're going to go with the THP and I'm like, then, then we're going to cancel the their shows podcast to talk about the carpet pythons. It's a um, shame. We have to declare war on them. <laughs> I didn't really want to destroy them, but now we must. Yes. Uh, I want to mention, uh, I'm just going to throw it out there Mm. because we saw it right before we were going live, Mm. but, uh, over on the carpet Python Facebook group page, um, you should go over there and check it out because they have this, um, um, GoFundMe thing going for reptile genetic services. And it turns out that they are offering the Morelia Python Forum Vintage Tea uh, for sale with a donation. <laughs> We've become that point. Do you remember when I got you the Martin's Aquarium t-shirt? We've become yeah. that point where MP, it's like, I'm wearing it because it's vintage. Like, you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, like watching st- toddlers wear a Van Halen shirt. Like, you don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, they're trying to raise funds. Um, I think, and you know, they're doing a GoFundMe, um, because, well, we all know Ben, right? Yes, ben, we ben do Morrill. know. We've heard ben of Ben. Yeah. Um, awesome guy. And, uh, he's doing a lot of work with, um, you know, if you send the shed it skin. It is and- awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Right. And it is great, especially for a species that you may be difficult to sex or, you may want to you may have to wait until it grows up before you probe it or pop it now you can just send a shed and figure it out it's great i yes. really want to figure out um i have to do some more research because i keep trying to toy around with the idea of getting some of mine done and i just i have sh- these sheds and i just have to figure out how to do it where to send it and all that stuff right so in the coming months mm-hmm. um they're they they're working they can offer tests to find out if your animal is het in hide ball pythons mm-hmm. and lavender ball pythons. And I guess in the coming months, they're hoping to have clown, desert ghost, genetic stripe, hypo, exanic, ultra male, albino, orange dream, yellow belly, black pastel, uh, and, and among a possible few others. Mm-hmm. They also hope to have in the next few months sexing test for green tree pythons, nice. finally. Can you imagine Most other pythons, which is incredible? Yeah. Right? Can I imagine what? Like, just you have a clutch of green tree pythons. Now you can just send the sheds. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. yeah. And I th- I think you're pretty much going to be able to guarantee uh, that blue tongue skinks, which is uh, as being just a new to the blue tongue skink world, that's sort of the. Uh, the issue with them is that you can't sex them, so you don't know if you have a pair. So I'm going to be uh, taking advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Gurnia skinks, Gila monsters, and beaded lizards, That's which great. is uh, which is awesome. So, um, so yeah, go over there, donate today. Forty bucks, you get a vintage T MPT, or you can get uh, the uh, reptile genetics um, T-shirt as well. Um, I love the MP. I'm actually wearing mine tonight. Yeah. See, like the holes and shit. Oh, and you can retire. <laughs> you can hang that up like an old I band T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, I wear it as like a sleeping shirt. Yeah, you know? but uh, um, so you can go over to. Uh, I will share it on. Um, if I can, I think I can. On the pick of the week, or. On Maybe the NPR I can't share. Facebook page. I'll have to reach out to. Uh, so basically, at this point, I would say go over to uh, Carpet Python's uh, Facebook page, and uh, you can um, you can see it. it's pinned up at the top. Sean Christian made the post uh, March fourteenth. So go over and check it out. Uh, cool stuff. Again, pushing the hobby forward. Um, it's on the and, Carpet uh, Python discussion page. No, no, no. It's on just Carpet Python's. Hmm. Is the group. I'm a member of such a page? I'm not. What the hell? You you might not be. Oh uh, my god, you're slacking, man. Mm. Get it together. I don't, I don't need to talk to you, Morelia people. <laughs> <laughs> we talk to you enough. Uh, if you like people, like I want to know what you think. I'm pretty sure if you uh, want to do that, there's a there's a way to do that. <laughs> like to think about what I think. Yeah, I want to say I just looked it up. I'm going to mm. see rare genetics. 
Um, what is it? Raregenetics.com. Um, hold on. Yeah, raregeneticsinc.com. Okay. And I don't know if he has over there. Well, it tells you what they're doing. So cool. Uh, yeah. I love it. I definitely follow him on Facebook because every once in a while he has one like he pops up what's going on or this one was just sexed using this. It's like, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh Ben's Ben's an awesome guy. Yeah. He's, he's really cool. So I'm glad to uh, see him finally start to uh, bring this to fruition. So mm -hmm. I know he's been working on it for quite a while. Yeah. And had stuff going and whatnot, but uh, yeah. So you're sporting, uh, them and, uh, and and what they're doing. So okay, that's that. Uh, and MoreliaPythonRadio.com. If you want to get in touch with us, info at Python Radio. Go subscribe to the YouTube and uh, channel NPR Network, um, and follow us on social media. NPR Network. Cool. Uh, go check out the Teespring store and become a Patreon at the inland level, and you get to come hang with us on Saturday when we do the Patreon um, show. That's a once a month thing. You get to hang with us. We get to talk about whatever and uh, answer questions and all that fun stuff. So uh, definitely go do that. Uh, and that I think is all we have for everybody today. So uh, thank you all for listening and we'll catch everybody back here next week for some more Morelia Python radio. Good night. Mm -hmm.